I wish you Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And do you know that next year Christmas is going to be, Christmas Eve is on Sunday? Look at your pastor's face. <laughs> all day long and all night. That's what we're going to do and we are praising God for it. I want to take a moment also to say thank you to our amazing staff, all of our staff that has worked so hard in this season, and our music ministry, and our volunteers, our ushers. We had over 3,000 people here yesterday in worship, and our people were the most hospitable, wonderful, working day and night to the wee hours to make this place a place of great worship and fellowship. So could we just say thank you to God and to all the people. Thank you all so much. Wonderful, wonderful. Merry Christmas and God bless us everyone. I'm so happy it's Christmas Day and, and looking forward to this time with you and the preaching and all of worship being our gift to God and also time with family and, and enjoying that season in our life as well. What a blessing to be here on Christmas Day. Today we have our gospel lesson from John and I want to take us through that this morning because we're going to talk about the gift of life. All through Advent, I have shared with you the gifts of Christmas, peace, hope, joy, and love. And today, John reminds us that Jesus comes to give us life. And you know how we are about darkness. We don't like it when we get up in the middle of the night to raid the refrigerator. Anybody doing that late last night? You need night lights. You need something. You don't want to stump your toe. You don't want to trip over something and injure yourself. When you're in your home in the middle of the night, you need a light. Oh, and there are times as a spiritual image for us, we need to remember that. We need that light turned on in our hearts and in our minds. We also know that when we're driving down a dark road, don't you love the high beams? Do you love that? My car has a feature on it where it will switch from brights to the regular lights. I love that. It doesn't even wait for me to think about it. It just turns it off and on. I like that. Well, there's a spiritual image for us that Jesus comes to give us that light and turns it on for us automatically through his own life. And as I think about that, I want us to remember today that our gift from God is our life. And also I want you to notice, if you have your Bibles open on your phone or on your iPad or in the pew in front of you, I want you to look at this. I want to walk us through this text this morning. I want you to listen uh, to these words. In the beginning, those three words, would you say that with me? In the beginning, John takes us all the way back to the first book of our faith story in Genesis. What are the first three words in Genesis? In the beginning. And John gives us that image of everything from the very beginning is God's. And I love this. Listen to this again. In the beginning was the Word. In the Greek, that is the Logos, literally the Word. And the Word was with God. The Word here described by John is Jesus. Jesus is the Logos, the Word. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Friends, this is very important to us in our theology because we want to realize that there was never a time, never a time, when we didn't have the fullness of God. We have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's the Trinity. Well, some scholars will say that developed later in the Christology and in the understanding of who Jesus is. But if you read Genesis, God uses the language of plurality. We let us make humankind in our image. And the Spirit hovers above the waters, and God breathes life into Adam and Eve. And so you see, Jesus, who comes to us on this Christmas day as we celebrate that, the Trinity, the Spirit, the Son, and the Father were together as one from the beginning. There isn't a time when we didn't have Christ. This is very important in our theology. It's very important because John tells us he was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. I don't know about you, but I find that very comforting. There isn't a time when God didn't know what God was doing. Doesn't that matter to us? We need to know that God knows what God is doing. 
And so this promise, this plan is there from the beginning. What has come into being in him, here is our story today, was life. And the life was the light of all people. I want us to pay attention to that this morning. God did not come for a few people, for a group of people, but for all people. Let's say that together. All people. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. We need that today. We need to know that there is no darkness that God can't bring the light and break through it. There is nothing that God can't overcome. The darkness did not overcome it. And then John teaches us about the cousin of Jesus, John the baptizer, the son of Zechariah and Elizabeth, and this is where he talks about him. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. And I love this. I love how John explains this because it is coming at a time when the people need to refocus and center their understanding of who Jesus is and how God unfolded everything. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become the children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will or of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen His glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Friends, this is the core of our foundation. This is our understanding of who we are and whose we are in Christ. This is very rich. And it's important if you understand how the Bible is assembled, literally ta biblia, the library, is the assemblage of these books of our faith. We have Genesis at the beginning, we have Revelation at the end. Not everything in the scripture is in chronological order because it is a story of faith. And sometimes people read it and they don't realize that. They don't realize how it is not a book of science but a book of faith. And there are things in there that are rich and wonderful and are gift from God. Jesus is the Logos, the Word of God. It is so important. And and when John is writing, and this is important, John is a human being. And he is a human being who loves the fact that Jesus loves him and he is one of the beloved. He calls himself the beloved. Very often in the Gospel of John, he will refer to himself and we know that he's talking about his own relationship with Christ. We know that. And so all of us like to feel like Jesus loves us, this we know. And some people like to think that they're the favorite of Jesus. You know how people will say, God loves you, but I'm his favorite. The truth is we're all his favorite. He loves all of us. It's so important to know that today. And I want us to understand in the sequence on this Christmas day of this gospel lesson that John is the latest written of the four gospels. It's it's not one of the synoptics. That is, it is not Matthew, Mark, and Luke where many of the writings in those Gospels are in agreement. John is distinctive. It doesn't give us a birth story. It just opens with, in the beginning, and tells us who Jesus is. That's a gift to us. It's important that we understand that the Gospel of John is written later in the faith of the people. You see, in the sequence of it, if we were putting the Bible together today, it would be Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. But because the church liked the language and the imagery in Matthew, it was put first in the book. Some of you know that, some of you don't know that. Merry Christmas, it's a present to you today for you to know that. And when John is writing, there is a great debate as to whether or not John wrote uh, the book of Revelation. I'm going with those scholars who say that he did because there are too many things in there that can give textual evidence to that as well. And I also love that the scholars who believe that when Jesus handed Mary over to John, at the crucifixion and said, son, behold your mother, mother, behold your son. John was given the task of taking care of the mother of Jesus. Many scholars believe that John took Mary to modern-day Turkey, to Ephesus. There is a house there called Mary's house. 
There are many that believe that. And later, as the churches were established, as John would later be sent to Patmos to be exiled where he wrote the book of Revelation, some scholars disagree with that. And that's okay because what I love is when we get to heaven, God will say, you were right, you were wrong, you were right, you were wrong. And guess what? I'm right all the time and none of it matters anymore. I love that part while we try to figure things out and we perform what I call intellectual gymnastics with reading scripture. What matters, my friends, is the relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what matters to us. What matters is what John is saying in the beginning. From the beginning, God has all this figured out. I love that. And I love that on Christmas Day. These are words of hope and promise to us. Words of assurance. I love that. And, and then as we look at it, as we look at this text, we have to realize that the reason we are made for life, made for abundant life, is because of the love in God's heart. I love to know that the reason I'm here is because God thought it was a good idea. I hope you feel that way about your life right now. I hope you're celebrating that right now because we have Christmas, and, and here it is. I better hold on to the pulpit. Are you ready? Children, it's okay. Hold on. Listen to Pastor Sandra. The church celebrates December 25th, but we don't know the actual day. Are you okay? Are you okay? Why do we have a day? Because we celebrate the memory and the reality that Jesus is born. What matters is that he is born, right? He is born. He is born and he is the light and life for all the people. I even say this when people are having their family celebration. Some of you have not opened Christmas gifts yet. That's okay. Some of you did it a week ago. We did that at our house a week ago. Some of you will do it tonight, tomorrow, whenever you're with your family. It's not about the date on the calendar. It's about the date you have with God in your heart. Do you remember that today on Christmas Day? It's about the relationship with Him. Great and glorious is our life. The light has overcome the darkness. The light is the life of all the people. And we are celebrating that today. That is our life-giving news. That is our great news. I love that. Jesus is the light of the world. And we see that light of love as we gather today, marking this time and place on December 25th. Jesus, born into the world to bring us hope and peace, joy and love. These are the gifts of Christmas. I also want us to realize that darkness is real. There are people living in it every day. There are people waking up. I love one of the things that Brian said in his prayer today. There are people waking up unsure of their future. Friends, for people who are going through that, God is counting on us. God counts on us to bear that light to others, to be that hope and that joy, that laughter, that encouragement. And darkness is real in all of our lives because of sin. Sin is that acronym that you've heard me say, self-indulgence now. And salvation is needed because of sin. Sin causes the shadow self to live and flourish. That is not what God wants for us. Remember what I said a few moments ago in our, in our ministry life together in my sermons? I said that God comes for us to grow and flourish, not to perish. God comes for us to grow and flourish, not to die, not to perish. Spiritually unhealthy lives are lives lived in the darkness. That's not what God desires for us. Jesus shines the light of truth into our hearts so we can see who we are, whose we are, and who we're supposed to be. We are not supposed to be self-indulgent. We are supposed to be self-sacrificing. We're supposed to be compassionate and loving. I love how that gets into our DNA, though, just because of our culture and how materialistic we can all be. I like the story of two brothers. A few days before Christmas, two young brothers were spending the night at their grandparents' house. And when it was time to go to bed, anxious to do the right thing, they both knelt down to say their prayers. Isn't it interesting how prayers go up at Christmas time? Suddenly, the younger brother began to do so in his own prayer life very loudly. Dear Lord, please ask Santa Claus to bring me a PlayStation, a mountain bike, and a telescope. His older brother leaned over and nudged his brother by the bed and said, Why are you shouting your prayers 
God is not death. I know that, but Grandma is. <laughs> Who do we pray to? What are we praying? For? What are we looking for this Christmas? God is not death, my friends. God is listening to us. God loves us. And we know that God wants life for us, and we need his light, and we need to know that he comes to love and forgive. He does not come to shame us. He comes to claim us. Would you say that with me? He does not come to shame us. He comes to claim us. I love that. Jesus, I have overcome. I will help you overcome whatever it is that keeps you in the darkness. Fear, selfishness, hatred, greed, anger. Surely those are the darkest places in humanity. The sin and the fall of creation are why we have that. But God overcomes that. God comes into our world in baby Jesus so that light and life are meant for us. Jesus comes to shine the light and transform the darker aspects of our condition to beauty and brightness. Live in the light of Jesus. Everything changes. Fear becomes trust. Selfishness and greed give way to compassion and generosity. Anger and hatred are transformed into forgiveness and love. My dear ones, we have been fashioned by God to live in this light. We can think, we can act, we can hope, we can dream. Jesus came as a baby, as a human being, and God comes fully human getting who we are and getting us to be where he wants us to be. Jesus is God with flesh on. He laughs, he cries, he bleeds, he dies, and because Jesus is God, Jesus rises again for guaranteeing our eternal destiny. Our eternal destiny. That is light. This is the truth of the good news on Christmas Day. We sing these words in the carol. This is our understanding, our understanding of who Christ is. O come, O come, all ye faithful. True God of true God. Light from light eternal. Yes, God is with us. How is this light even possible? How can God make such miraculous hope happen in a harsh and dark world? Because as John tells us today, from the beginning, nothing is made without God. Nothing is going to happen to us outside of God's knowledge. And God is with us. And God loves us. And God will not ever leave us. God gives the energy to the light to our lives. And too often we take that for granted how much he loves us. I love how Mary Jean said to the children, do you know why you get presents? Do you know why you get a toy? One word, love. Love in our hearts, love from God. And I want us to remember that we have so much to be thankful for. So dear ones, on this Christmas day, we celebrate the gift of life in Christ Jesus. We celebrate his birth. We celebrate who we are in him. And we will bear witness to that love and that light, living our lives for him, because what has come into being in him is life. And the life is the light of all the people. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, dear friends. Let the people of God say, Amen. Holy God, we thank you. We thank you for this day, for what is ahead for us in our lives what is in our hearts that you have planted there. God, may we be like you. May we, may we shine brightly the light and love to all people. Thank you, God, for forgiving us for the things that we do and think and say, for putting us on the right path into the path of your light and love. And now bless us, God, as we will go forth from this place, celebrating your birth, your light, your love, your hope, your joy, and your peace. In the name of the Christ child, let the children of God agree. Amen.